Mock Tower is the infamous drop tower at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. The ride has the notable distinction as the park's tallest attraction, but today is the ride's final day of operation. Find out why, along with my thoughts on the ride in this video. Mock Tower is the first phase in a two-year plan to rejuvenate the park's Oktoberfest section. The ride was intended to open in spring of 2011, but it was delayed until late summer of that year due to a series of technical issues. That was a sign of things to come. This ride was a mechanical nightmare from day one. The ride was built by Moser Rides. This Italian company has built tons of junior drop towers across the globe, but they have not built too many adult drop towers. Mach Tower is the company's first gravity tower. This was a 246 foot or 75 meter tall gyro drop tower. To differentiate itself from other drop towers out there, this model offered vibrating seats and onboard audio. Mock Tower opened with both these effects, but both these elements have been disabled for years. I suspect reliability is the biggest reason. Removing these features eliminated two additional things that could break or go wrong, but the ride still struggled to stay open. So when Busch Gardens Williamsburg announced the ride's removal, I was not too surprised. The park cited low ridership as the primary reason. The mechanical issues certainly limited the ride's throughput, but it quite simply was not all that popular. I know some may wonder if it's related to the Orlando Freefall accident, but this is a different manufacturer, and Mock Tower's popularity was an issue even before that tragic incident. This ride was often closed in quieter days. In my most recent visits, the drop tower would usually open late, if it even opened, and when it was open, it almost never had a line. Last week was the longest wait I've ever seen for Mock Tower. For reference, almost every coaster in the park had a full queue line spilling onto the midway. The line just to get into the park took two hours according to some people on Facebook. Yet, how long was Mock Tower's line? No more than 10 to 15 minutes. And it's worth noting that was even after all the coasters closed at night due to low temperatures. Quite simply, people still did not want to ride Mock Tower. The ride does have a higher capacity than most drop towers though, if you look past the reliability component. The circular gondola holds 30 riders per cycle. At the end of the queue, riders are batched into groups. You're assigned one of four colored squares to stand in. Red, yellow, blue, and green. Once all the spots are filled, the employees bring you into the load area. You walk to a seat with a colored circle above it matching your square you are standing in. This helps ensure groups are seated together. One of the worst parts about Mock Tower are the seats. There are two issues with them. One, they are hard plastic with zero padding. Two, they are super narrow, so they really box your arms and shoulders in. These honestly may be the same seats they use for their junior drop towers. And keep in mind, I'm a pretty small guy at 5 foot 9, 165 pounds. If I find it cramped, this cannot be comfortable for a larger guest. People in this demographic may also have issues with the restraints, both from a fit and comfort standpoint, but I personally find the restraints themselves fine. You have an over-the-shoulder restraint and seatbelt combination. The over-the-shoulder harness is bulky, but because of my dimensions, it gives me more freedom than you may expect. Once it locks, it can still flex a bit forwards. For all the ride's issues, one thing I cannot deny is how it looks. It's a key component of this park's skyline. The ride was painted blue to blend in with the sky, but it can be seen from miles away. And I like how it's decorated. You have multicolored festive flags at the base, and some decorations on the gondola itself. Then while the onboard audio disappeared, you can still hear the area's theme music all around the load area. Right before you dispatch, you hear some narration to hold on to your leader hosen. You are then slowly lifted atop the 24-story tall tower. The gondola rotates three times on the way up, which grants everyone a full 360-degree view of the park. Bush Gardens is one of the prettiest parks in the world with all the big roller coasters, theming, and greenery, and it is a real treat to see it from that high in the air. Then the distance, you can see the James River. This is particularly gorgeous at sunset. Originally, this ascent was paired with some beautiful music that worked well with those sights. And fun fact, at Christmas Town, Busch Gardens usually transformed the ride into Knock Tower. 
the high speed drop is disabled, and the ride is operated as an observation tower. This makes the ride much more family friendly. This Christmas Town, Bush Gardens did not operate this ride in this mode so people could experience Mock Tower one last time in its usual form before its removal. At the top, the gondola stops rotating. In the ride's early years, the seats would then vibrate. And this was honestly a pretty freaky effect. It was pretty violent. It felt like the vehicle would shake itself apart, which would mess with riders between the height and how sudden it was. The music when it was offered would also cut out at the top. Now, you may just hear an employee come over the PA system and tease you before the plunge. Then without warning, you drop. Now I know many people criticize this ride's drop. Just listen to what Theme Park Worldwide said after their ride on this attraction. What the hell was that? That is probably one of the worst drop towers I've ever been on. Now, what are my thoughts on the drop? It feels like Moser took one of their junior drop towers and scaled it way up. It doesn't feel like you're dropping at the speed of gravity, so you get this weird stomach tingling sensation. If you have ridden one of those small drop towers, you may know the sensation I'm describing. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I honestly feel this drop more than a lot of SNS towers. Where this ride does fall short is in the airtime department. You barely get any which is a disappointment for a tower this tall. And it's a shame because I know Moser has it in him. Drop of Fear is a Moser drop tower at Wonderland that looks like one of those second generation Intamin models. And the drop is pretty gut-wrenching. It feels like a soaring eagle drop tower. Then I rode two other gravity towers from Moser and Finland. But the drops felt way different in those two. I felt it less in my stomach. However, I did get floater airtime the whole way down. So maybe they learned from Mock Tower. So what would I rate Mock Tower? I would give this drop tower a 7 out of 10. This ride did a lot of things well. It looked good in the area, offered a breathtaking view thanks to the rotating seats, and the drop felt unique. While there are more powerful drop towers out there, particularly when it comes to airtime, this ride could still elicit some tummy tickling sensations. If it was open, and that sadly was a big if, I would always take a spin on Mock Tower. So what do I think will replace this ride? The park filed a 220 foot height waiver for a large new attraction in 2024, but that location is expected to be behind Fest House Park where Drakenfire once stood. So I suspect it will be at least 2-3 years before anything major happens to Mock Tower's site. I hope whatever replaces it will be able to offer the same stunning panoramic views. There are three possibilities that would accomplish this and fit in the ride's pre-existing footprint. 1. Build a new drop tower. I think this is the least likely option. SeaWorld has not had good luck with drop towers. The other one in the chain is Falcon's Fury at Busch Gardens Tampa. While that Intamin creation has received rave reviews for its tilt feature, the ride has suffered extensive downtime in recent years. So if Busch Gardens goes the drop tower route, I suspect they may go with an SNS tower, both from a reliability standpoint and because it could run a different program than Mock Tower to differentiate itself. 2. Build an observation tower. Given how popular Knock Tower was, this would offer the same great views from a ride that would be far more reliable and have a lower height limit, allowing the whole family to join along. I also am a bit skeptical given how frequently the observation towers of the SeaWorld parks are closed but those are admittedly much older attractions. 3. Build a Star Flyer. This seems to be the most popular option. This ride would give the same view as Mock Tower as guests spin high in the air. And this ride has proven to be much more reliable, just as long as you don't go with a Mondial Windseeker model like the one I found at King's Dominion. But whatever comes, I hope it's exciting. So those are my thoughts on Mock Tower, the problematic drop tower at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. What are your thoughts on this attraction? Let me know what you think about its removal or the on-ride experience in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.